Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be talking about parts in 3Design. One of the biggest questions I get when I'm training, especially um, new users or even our advanced users, they want to know why would we use parts in 3Design? And we can use that to help us organize our history as well as do some cool parametric tricks where you can build different versions of the same ring using parts of different, different parts of the models. So, this is what we're going to be building today. We're gonna to go ahead and organize this and build some different rings using different components from different parts. So let's jump right into it. We're gonna go file new, start fresh. And the first thing I wanna point out is, you may have seen in my videos, and I usually do this for our beginner classes as well, our tree is organized a little differently than the default. This is the non-simplified tree. What this does is it breaks each part into different sections. You have your stack and a section for sketches. One thing this helps us do is if you want to quickly hide all your sketches within that part, you can right click and hide it and it'll hide all your sketches instead of having to search through one long list of different solid pieces and sketches all mixed together. If you'd like to set that up and I recommend it, go to your F12 options under miscellaneous and the third one down here simplified tree for part module go ahead and uncheck that apply and hit ok this does require a restart and it won't affect files that were created using the simplified tree so it only affect files going forward but go ahead and um, switch that out and that's going to help you organize your tree nicely so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to decide what component I want to be in this main part, this first part that I'm building. And I'd like to go ahead and rename that part to match that. So this first one's going to be our ring size. So instead of naming each individual piece in here, I'm just gonna name the entire part. And we'll go ahead and build a ring size builder. Go ahead and set what size you want. And in this case, we don't need to worry about the uh, offset plane or anything. We'll leave it at default. Go ahead and validate. So that's it for our first part. Go ahead and click on part to create a new part. Every time you change parts, you'll get this warning that your, your part has changed. I recommend keeping this showing because it helps you just remember when you're working with multiple parts that you've um, clicked on something that's part of a different part it gives you that reminder you can click do not show again if you have turned that off and you'd like to turn it back on again in the f12 options at the very bottom is a button that you can press to reset all your messages so go ahead and click ok and like I said, I like to organize these as I go. We're going to rename this to my cross sections. And in this part, I'm going to go ahead and create a front view sketch along the OXZ. Click sketch. And we'll draw all the different cross sections we want to use in this project. I've already pre-drawn mine. You can use any two cross sections you want. Either pull them from the library or draw them yourselves and go ahead and exit that sketch. That's it for that, that part. So your parts don't necessarily mean solid parts. It could be anything in there, including sketches as well as solid, solid parts. So the next part we're gonna create, create a new part, click on the warning. This one is going to be by setting number one. Inside setting number one, I'm going to go ahead and create my first setting. So I'm gonna use a stone. This one I'm just gonna use a regular brilliant half carat. So your default stone and validate. And then I'm gonna build a simple bezel. Obviously, in your projects, you can build these any way you want. We're just going to do something very basic so we can concentrate on organizing and not so much about the designing. So go ahead and set up your bezel. In the second tab, you can adjust the thicknesses and heights. Get that set up the way you want. I like to fill it these so they're not so sharp. 
and there's our first setting. That's it for number one. We're going to go ahead and create another part and rename that to setting number two. Okay, at this point I can hide my first setting and now we're just going to be working on our second setting. This one I'll do another stone inside the finger size builder and I think I'll do an oval and just kind of make it a little bigger and validate and once again build a quick bezel. So side view, just the profile, the heights, as well as our filleting. All right, so we have two different setting components that we can use later on. We'll go ahead and hide that one. And we'll do our next part. This one's gonna be my first shank. So click on new part, go to your tree, rename. This will be shank number one. Shank number one is just gonna be a quick sweeping wizard using the first cross section. I've already sized it so I can just go quickly and validate it. There's my first shank. Simple as that. Go ahead and do the next one. New part, click OK, rename. This one's gonna be shank number two. I can hide shank number one so it's not in the way when I'm doing the second one. And same thing, quick sweep, using the sweeping wizard, add a section, choose the second profile or section, and validate. Right. Shank number two will hide. And now we're ready to create our final rings, our different combinations of these different shanks and settings. So the next part that we create is going to be, I like to call it an assembly since it's an assembly of different components. And we'll rename that to assembly number one. And in this assembly, I'm going to combine setting number one with shank number one. So while I have assembly number one checked here, that's the, that's the part I'm currently in, I can still use components from the different parts. So with these two components, I'll go ahead and select them all. And then, so they're not all stacked up on top of each other, I'll just use a move tool move it off to the side. And validate. Now you'll see that move is now the main part of my assembly number one. It's still there in the other parts and can be reused for other new parts later on. The history is underneath, so if I wanna change any parts of this, any um, components of it, I can go right to that stone, make the changes. It's gonna affect everywhere in the tree that that stone is used. I can also go quickly back to setting number one and make those changes. So it's nice and organized. So the next um, assembly I'm going to do, I'll create another part. The part is changed, we'll rename this assembly number two. Now I'm working inside assembly number two. I'm going to go ahead and show setting number two and shank number two. And same thing, we'll take all of them and just move them together into a group. If you don't wanna move them, you can just use the group icon, the group tool to group them together and name them that way. I like to move them so they're not all stacked on top of each other when I once I get them all done. So there's assembly number two, combination of the oval setting with the second shank. And we can keep going with all the different variables. So we'll do a new part, rename, assembly number three, 
and that's going to let me just hide these again we're going to use number setting number one with shank number two so we get that combination and move those over and then finally our fourth version is going to be renamed to assembly number four and that's going to be setting number two let's just again it's easy if you hide and show these as you go hide them all we're just going to be working on setting number two and shank number one would be our fourth combination and we'll take those and move them off to the right and now we have our four assemblies using components from the different parts we started with so you can really break this down however you want how you like to organize it what's going to make it easier when you want to go back to this file later and make adjustments the nice thing is we've associated different parts to all of the rings for example our ring size builder is common in all four rings so if I need this set of four rings, but I need it in a different size, I just double click back into my ring size builder. Notice that it tells me my part has changed. In my tree, you'll see I'm now working in the ring size part. And you see that's checked here. And we'll change our ring size and validate. All four rings need to be recomputed. So just like that, we can make those changes. If you want to go back and you've decided you don't like the round size stone, we just go back to setting number one, change the stone, make that a one carat instead. Notice that it's only going to affect the assemblies that include that stone. Recompute, and there we go. So hopefully this is a demystified um, parts for you. It helps you organize your tree and you can do some cool um, groups of rings all using different components of other rings. Once you've built your library, you've got um, all your parts and components saved. You can start dragging those up into new parts and then combine them into different assemblies. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time in the video demonstration series.